tell you, Splinterheads, welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate everyone uh, spending a little time with me. I'm Bronze Dragon. I like to cover Splinterlands topics uh, several times a week, depending upon how much is going on. So let's get right into it. Now, earlier today, I put out a video and I was going over the recent news that was put out from the Splinterlands team this week. And I noticed toward the end of my video, it was getting rather long in the tooth. And I was trying to wrap things up. And I noticed that I kind of skated through a very important part of their page, the bottom part of their page, which discussed the new abilities of the new um, uh, Soulbound Rewards cards. And I felt that it uh, definitely deserved another look. So I want to go back through this and I want to pick it apart because in this bottom part of their page, and I'll leave the link again, the Peak D article uh, in the show notes, but they put a lot of information in just a very few paragraphs. So I went back through and I dissected it to get the information out that I think that everybody needs to be able to use these new cards. And obviously it's gonna take some uh, experimentation, but I wanna go ahead and give these notes to you and read through them and talk about it a little bit. So let's go ahead and open up my notes here. Now, the first ability uh, is the biggest one they talk about is the conscript ability. It will be available on the summoners and it allows one gladiator card to be played in battle, including ranked in tournaments. And on top of that, allows two gladiator cards to be used in guild brawl. So if you're playing a guild brawl and you use a conscript summoner, you can use your regular gladiator card that you usually get plus another one. So that's two. Now in the future, the conscript rule set will allow both players to play an additional gladiator in battle. The Guild Brawl battle with the Conscript Summoner will be able to use three Gladiator cards in battle. Can you imagine how that is going to affect the meta? meta? Um, I can tell you right off, just from doing my Guild Brawls, I always make sure to throw a Gladiator card in there because they're so powerful. And the only card, as far as I know, that has the Bloodlust ability on top of them on the regular side is Jared Scar, which I like him coincidentally as well. I think he's pretty good, um, pretty strong as well. Um, now, with uh, not going down that route anymore, <laughs> side sidetrack. Um, every time I talk about this stuff, my mind starts going on different tangents of what would be good possibilities and hands and good pairs and everything. So let's keep going with this. Um, the mana cost is six. Uh, is designed to, uh, is designed to mitigate uh, the overpowered issues. So I feel that if those cards were any less mana to cast, it would be overpowered. So this kind of uh, goes back to the fact that it's probably gonna, probably gonna limit these away from low mana matches. Who knows? We may see them there in the future, but um, probably I would say at least above. 25 somewhere in that neighborhood before you're going to use them but who knows we'll see okay so the soulbound summoners will be rare they will cost six mana to cast and they will have on top of the conscript ability they will have one other low level stat buff or debuff such as slow or something like that conscript fits in overall encouraging and rewarding players for participating um, because they designed this whole uh, set to work well together, as well as, and I'll get this uh, into this uh, in another page or two, um, there are a few powers that have been around, but not used very much. So let's go forward. Yep, skip forward. Okay, the next power uh, we'll talk about is Martyr. Okay. When a character, and we're not talking about summon here, just a regular character you cast, with Martyr dies, it gives adjacent characters plus one to all stats. So, they point out in the article that positioning will be very important to make full effect. Okay, So, obviously, if you are going to 
give adjacent characters plus one, you really aren't getting the full effect if you're in the first or the last position. So that's just something. It's not saying you can do it, but it's saying you're not going to get the full effect out of it because then you're only buffing one character, right? Important that the intended characters are adjacent to it when it dies to receive the buff. So this is going to come into play when you decide how to position the character. Um, so obviously, when the martyred character dies, the other characters around it receive the buff. Okay, going forward. The martyr effect will pair nicely with the resurrect ability cards. Okay, we can see kind of kind of going off on this tangent again. The play would be to position the martyr so that it dies, gives its plus one benefit buff to the other characters, is resurrected, and then dies again and gives the plus one buff again, thereby giving a total of plus two to all stats. Okay. Next, the Martyr effect is very similar to the plus one stats that Bloodlust gives, so they had to go ahead and come up with a few more rules for Bloodlust. The first thing is, or a couple more rules, um, Bloodlust will be removed when hit by a character with Dispel. Okay, makes sense. I'm going the wrong way. And I don't know why I positioned this. Uh, I made this... Um, this word document up really quickly so bloodlust will always give plus one speed even in reverse speed rule set stop so what that tells me is you probably shouldn't use bloodlust in a reverse speed rule set right because all you're doing is making it faster which in reverse speed makes it slower so chew on that one for a while Okay, next up, the third power we'll talk about, weapons training. And I know you can get on me about this, this page layout because I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. I just wanted to get this information out there because I felt like I glossed over it in my last um, video. Um, and I thought it was very worth covering because, first of all, I wanted to understand the new powers. And there was a lot of information in that article. Okay, weapons training also is the same type of idea, affects adjacent cards heavily dependent on positioning once again okay a character with weapons training will train adjacent characters with no attack so you're playing another character without with zero no type of attack it's going to buff those characters that are on that flank it are on either side okay adjacent characters being trained receive an attack of the same type of the character that is buffing it with the weapons training ability. So if it's range, if it's melee, if it's magic, it's going to get that. Okay. Um, now the amount of the attacks to be granted are still in play testing. And what that tells me is that you're not going to be able to, uh, who knows, but what that tells me is they may think that say, for instance, a card with plus three range that is buffing cards flanking it they get range but they may not get the full plus three range they might only get plus one or plus two it's in play testing we'll see how it goes as with everything we talk about uh, when they put out this news until it actually hits the road and it's released everything can change so but the amount is still in play testing but the characters who are buffed are going to get the same type of attack now this leads into the next one. If two characters with weapons training flank a character with no attack, that character will get both attack types. If the two with the same attack, if both of them flanking that character have the same attack type, the character in the middle will get the higher of the two attacks. So you got a guy with no attacks usually in the middle, and you got a guy with uh, a character with range on one side and a character with magic on the other side then that character in the middle will get both range and magic. But if both of those characters flanking that guy had range and one of them was plus two and one of them was plus one, then he would get the plus two. But once again, that goes back to my earlier, my last point was these values are still in playtesting. So who knows how it's going to come out. But the, the idea is there, right? Okay, so next, if a character with weapons training dies... 
the buffed characters will lose their attacks. Pretty logical. Okay. Buffed characters will be affected, and I've made a typo there, by other effects that modify attacks such as Inspire, Headwinds, Summoner effects, etc. Makes sense. They're buffed, and if a usual effect that would take uh, take place on another card with that kind of effect on it, then it's going to take effect even if those characters are temporarily buffed, right? So they will still be considered as having no attack for the oppress ability, which still will do double damage to them. So as we're getting ready to see in the next few notes is that oppress is one of the abilities coming to the forefront that prior to now has been kind of not used a whole lot. But it may be one of those valid attacks that you start using. Now, they sum up uh, the article with additional comments. Okay, The new Soulbound set contains six cards with weapons training ability. One legendary from each element, except for neutral. Two of those will have melee, two will be ranged, and two will have magic attacks. And then they go further to say that the weapons training in play will be more or less powerful depending upon the weapon type, uh, attack type rather, and that the design, design team has taken that into account when creating the card stats. Now what that tells me is that one of these, maybe, maybe magic is less effective or uh, maybe range, or, range and magic are less effective with weapons training than melee is. So they've taken that into account and possibly buffed the attacks on the range and melee or vice versa. I don't know. I haven't played these yet. It'll take some time playing to see how these, uh, how this all ends up. But they've taken that into account. And as everything else, they're, this card set's still in play testing. So um, we'll see how it comes up. So, but their basic point is that um, they're taking that into account. Now, Next, seven of the epic rarity cards will have no attacks. Yeah, I thought the same thing when I heard that. Why would I want an epic with no attack? But this just falls in line with the whole set, and this will pair well with the weapons trainer cards. So you uh, have a couple weapons trainer cards, and you flank those with um, the epic cards without any attacks, then all of a sudden you got a much stronger hand, right? And I'll go back to what I said earlier, kind of mentioned earlier. Previously, underpowered attacks, oppress and dispel will feature heavily with this, within this card set. So if we see that these card sets um, or this card set is played more heavily and it gets into the meta, you're going to see a lot of oppress and dispel. Next, uh, weapons training will bring no attack cards more into the forefront, making oppress a more valuable tactic. I just talked about that. And dispel will remove both the weapons training effect, the martyr effect, and the bloodlust effect. I guess it's not both, it's all three of those. If a character with the spell hits any of those characters, making it a very strong option. So with that said, I hope that this uh, kind of dissects all this information for you, and I hope that you gained something uh, from this. And um, I apologize for the messy word document, but or messy, not uh, laid out well. That's a better term. Anyway, thanks for spending a few minutes with me. I appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe if you got anything out of this. And I hope everyone is happy and healthy through their January 2023. And I will see you on the flip side.